Okay, we have retained another integral. This one's from the UK integration B sample number two. We have the integral from zero to infinity of sine x over x dx. Okay, this is a really good one. When I first did this on paper, what I did was I used Feynman's trick on this just because we need something to get rid of this x. Kind of the way it is here is kind of impossible by normal methods. And then when I did that on paper, it actually led to a Laplace transform. So what I'm gonna do instead actually is kind of skip the Feynman's trick, go right to the Laplace transform. It's still really similar, but it just kind of works out nice this way. So what I wanna do here in order to get this in shape for a Laplace transform is if I just kind of multiply in here this term, e to minus sx, well now I've created another variable, this s, and you may think I've changed it, but what we can do is we can just set s equal to zero. We can say for our solution, we're gonna want um, s to be equal to zero. When you do that, this piece here is just going to become one, so we haven't changed it. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of put a label on this thing, just showing this is a Laplace, this is our Laplace transform, our goal function in terms of s. And now actually let's look at our definition for a Laplace transform just to see how this is alike. So Laplace transform is going to be defined in terms of an integral, where we're going to have, we usually write the Laplace transform in terms of t, our integral is going to be in terms of x, and then we have some function or whatever. And for an integral in this form, we can just say this is the same thing as the Laplace transform of this part, f of t. And if you're not familiar with Laplace transforms, I have a whole link to a playlist, and I'll put that in the description so you can check that out. And again, because here we have two variables, what this is going to result in when we evaluate this, because it's a definite integral, this is going to give me a function in terms of s. And so in terms of our problem, the f of t value here it's gonna be all of this part here. And so what we're gonna be looking for, this is just gonna be the Laplace transform of our f of t, or in this case, f of x, which is gonna be just sine x over x. But for a Laplace transform in this form, I did a video previously on this that you can check out as well, but we have a formula for this, and I'm just gonna use a different letter, but we use f here. So for this formula, we say, if we have a Laplace transform, say, g of t over t, then this is just going to be equal to the integral from s to infinity of, of big G of u, du. So it actually does get kind of confusing keeping track of all the variables because our function here has two variables, the s and the x. And then in order to do this, we've introduced u. And that's only because we're evaluating here with an s. So we're going to get back. This here is actually still going to be a function in terms of s. So even though we've used this variable u as an intermediate, we're still gonna get back here a function in terms of s. And so using this formula here, we notice our problem is in this form, just x instead of t. So to try to make this clear, this numerator value, this g of x, that's just gonna be sine x. So in order to find this big g of u value, what we need actually is the Laplace transform of just this g of x or just sine of x. But this right here is a well-known formula we can do. We often have like this coefficient on here, so we just have a coefficient of one on this. So using the formula for the Laplace transform of sine x, our coefficient, which is just one over s squared plus coefficient again squared, but that's just gonna be a one. So then coming back here to our problem, using this, this is gonna be an integral from s to infinity, our big G of u. So we're gonna use this, but now we need the variable to be u, not s. So what I'll do is I'll write this as one over u squared plus one du. So let me get rid of this. We already did this formula, but now this here is an easy integral, right? We know how to do this. This is just gonna be arctan. So evaluating this integral, we're gonna get just arctan of u, and this is gonna be evaluated from s to infinity. But now just evaluating this first, we're gonna have arctan at infinity. That's gonna be pi over two minus then evaluating at s, this is just, we'll just leave it for the moment. This is just gonna be arctan of s. And then this here is our function in terms of s. This is this thing we wanna find. And this is nice and everything, but we've got a definite integral. We want a numeric answer. We don't want this s here. We need to evaluate this at zero. So what we need to find for our solution is just f at zero. Plugging in, we're gonna have pi over two. This part's gonna be minus arctan at zero. But arctan at zero, that's just zero. And so for my final solution to this, we just get pi over two. Okay, there you have it. Good one from the UK Integration B. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.